Now the word called perfect is telos. It simply means the end, the climax. It always comes at the end. And you will be saying these words. I have finished the work thou gavest me to do. Now return unto me the glory that was mine. The glory that I had with thee before that the world was. That's what you were saying. You're only asking for the return of what you gave up to come down into the world of death. I finished the work. That's what the word tells me. To finish it, to accomplish it. And having finished it, I'm only asking for the return of what was mine before that the world was. And glory means God himself. Glorify thou me with thine own self, with that glory which I had with thee before that the world was. So what on earth could anyone ask for, comparable to the discovery of the Son, which brings his memory back? If I could only remember that I am the Father, and therefore as Father, there is a Son, and find a Son that could in some way call me and then bring back my memory. And he does. He calls you. And your memory returns, and here you stand before your own son, your only son. And then you know exactly who you are. And you know how you did it. Before that the world was, you prepared the way for yourself to be done. And he, your son, did everything that you willed him to do. And now you would not leave his soul in hell. You redeem him. And you bring him back. And you and your son return. Now the son is the sum total of all the experiences of humanity. Fused into a single whole and projected, personified, and it comes out as David. And that is David. You cannot blame anyone for not completely accepting the false concept that we have given to the world as we teach scripture. Those who are grounded in the Old Testament, you can't blame them for not unless they have the experience. When they have the experience, they will not go along with the traditional Christian concept. They will see their own wonderful state unfolding. But that Old Testament actually is true, it unfolds. And it is true in the New but not as taught by those who teach it. They teach it entirely different. It's not so at all. God is the only reality. There is nothing but God. And God is love. And God is the Father. And as a father, there must be a child. And that child happens to be a son. And that son happens to be David. And so I am telling you what I know from my own experience, I have not speculated, I have not theorized. If today we go back 2,000 years, we think the most important people who lived in the first century, A.D., would be the Caesars and the mighty powers of that day. They were the unknown fishermen. Name the others. The unknown fishermen of that century were the most important. So he comes into the world and man by his wisdom did not know God. So it pleased God by the foolishness that I preach, said Paul, to tell you of the mystery of God. And the weakness of man, he uses that. And the humblest of men, and he uses that, and not all the false pride of the world. Today we give awards to this one for being the best dress. But he can afford a hundred thousand a year to dress this. The other one can afford another fortune for something else. And we give all these awards every year. Ask me next year who was mentioned this year. Well, save just as shadows fade. 
But we go back 2,000 years, an unknown fisherman were the most important people that walked the face of the earth. And he called them one by one. And as he called them one by one, he embraced them and sent them. No one can be sent unless he's first called. And when he's called, he's embraced. But who embraced him while he was on earth? No. After he departed this world, it's the risen God that calls them. The risen Lord calls them. And when you're called into this, may I tell you, the story is so altogether true. There is here the angelic being with a recording book. How on earth could that be seen by Daniel? And it's true. Here is a book that tall, a book that wide. And here she stands, or rather she is seated at a desk, not unlike this, but it's a great one. And she is recording, the recording angel. And when you are called into this divine assembly, you stand at her side and she looks at you. She doesn't say one word to you, she just simply records your name. She checks off you, then you are taken in spirit into the presence of the risen Lord. The ancient of days, that who you, as described in Daniel. And he asked you the simple question, what is the greatest thing in the world? And you answer automatically as though you were divinely prompted. Faith, hope, and love. These three. But the greatest of these is love. He actually embraces you. He has hands, he has a face, he has a mouth, he asks your question. And here he embraces you, and you fuse as though you took a drop of water and dropped it into a bowl of water. It disappears in it without loss of identity. It becomes a bowl, and yet it is still individualized. I did not cease to be aware that I am the being that I thought myself to be. Yet I felt the ecstasy of the union. That was union. That was the true baptism of the Holy Spirit. And then I was placed in the presence of another who was infinite power. And it was he who sent me. But he is the same one who embraced him. For God is a protean being. He assumes any form that suits the purpose of the moment. So when I was sent, power sent me. When I was embraced, love embraced me. That is for eternal. As told in the 8th of Romans, nothing in eternity can separate us from the love of God. So another thing that I will go through, having been sent, can separate me from that union with love. But I was sent not by love, I was sent by power. It seemed to be almighty power when he sent me. Done with the blue God, not the social structure. Done with all external worship. It simply is an expression meaning all church protocols. Everything that is something on the outside done with it. It has nothing to do with reality. All the things you see when you go to church and all the crosses and all the things done with it. Not tear it down. Ignore it. It has nothing to do with reality. So power sent me to tell you what I am telling you. But love first embraced me, and therefore I am persuaded that not a thing in this world can separate me from the love of God. No matter what I go through, it can't separate me from the love of God. But I am telling you, you are God the Father. You will not awake until the sun appears. That moment in time when he appears, your memory returns. And you recognize him in the most intimate, marvelous manner. And no power in the world could shake your confidence in this union of father son. It's the return of memory. Amnesia vanishes. And your godhood returns. But you know everyone is going to have the identical experience. 
You cannot vote as you're told in the first chapter of Corinthians. I think it's the fourth chapter. I mean the first Corinthians, fourth chapter. What have you that you did not receive? If you received it, where can you boast? 